Yes, I can hear you. Can? Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that the audio was working generally. Yes, alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, thanks for joining. Just a few uh, reminders I've put in the chat and just to minimize disturbances, we'll keep the mute on throughout the presentation. And if you have questions, you can simply just put them in the chat. I think that will make the quality of the sound better and, and less disruption. And, um, and we'll also have like a survey or a poll at the end. Um, um, uh, Sheikh, we can see your screen if you want to um, okay. begin off with the recording. Yep, bismillah. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya al-musaleen. Wa ala ahli baytihi al-tajabin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa al Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we have reached now to the last passage of this dua. Before I continue with that, we still have two more days, today and then tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. We'll try to complete the dua today, the last passage. Tomorrow, we plan to summarize some of the important aspects. It's very important that you know, if you be there tomorrow, it will give you just a uh, nutshell, the most important aspects of this dua. And then on Saturday, 29th of Ramadan, inshallah, we have a discussion on where do we go from here? What do we do, for example, as we are closing Mount Ramadan, where do we go? So that is the plan. Tomorrow also, we also have a brief presentation by Dr. Fazl, who will just remind us as we get into Eid, that what are, you know, what are the restrictions we need to keep in mind, the social, you know, when, when we meet, meet our relatives and friends on the day of Eid. So inshallah, he's going to remind us tomorrow also after my presentation, just to keep that in mind. So let's go to uh, the last passage of this dua, passage number 30. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala, Allahumma wa salli ala Muhammad wa ali. Qabdani ma sallayta ala ahadin min khadkika qablahu. Wa anta musallin ala ahadin ba'dahu. Wa atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana. Waqini bi rahmatika adab al-naa. Wa Allah bless Muhammad in his house, all right? This is coming again and again. Remember I told you in one of the lectures that in the first 54 du'as of Sahifa, this salawat comes 20, 209 times. No, 209 times. You can imagine how important. And we also discussed the possible reason why there's a repeat of salawat in this du'a. No, the best you have blessed any of your creatures before him. That means we pray to Allah, not only that oh, may Allah bless Muhammad and his family, but in fact, the best of now, the best you have blessed any of your creatures. That means the prophets before him, you know, Joseph and Yaqub and Musa and Ibrahim and all those things, you know, he should be blessed. Now. And then, you know, and, and we bless any of them after him. So even before, even after, for example, after a prophet came, the imams and the awliya and all those. So yes, Allah is sending his blessing to them. But even then, of course, we said that Allah sends the best of blessings. So we'll discuss briefly about this thing now. And then, وَآتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا hasana, or فِي الْآخِرَةِ hasana. We know this ayah, right? This is ayat number 202 of Surah Al-Baqarah. The only difference here is Usually we say But here because Imam is now just in the first person, first person. No, protect me, you know, with your mercy through your mercy from the society of your father. So there's slight difference now. Now this, of course, before we get into this uh, salwat. There's one thing I would like to remind, I'm sure all of you are aware of it, that uh, those of us who recite the du'as for the last 10 days of Ramadan, if you see those du'as for the last 10 days of Ramadan, this ayat comes throughout, right? Those who are using manual of Ramadan devotions by Tayyibah publishers, begin, beginning page number 208, you'll find, that means you no, know, just save us from the burning fire of Jahannam, right? And this particular phrase, 
Rabbana atina atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirah hasana wa qina adhab an-nar harik this appears in every dua from 21st to 30th of Ramadan so it is an important aspect and also it's repeated in this dua right let's look at just this about salawat how important it is we have discussed about salawat earlier i'm sure we also have heard in some number of majalis so i won't get into those things something special i thought i'll try to bring there's an ayat of quran which is quite interesting you know this is surah al-barat ayat number 103 خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَحِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّهِمْ بِمَا بِمَا بِهَا no? Prophet had been told that take arms out of their property. That means these Muslims just take arms out of the property and you would cleanse them and purify them. No? خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ أَمْوَالِ That means أَمْوَالِ of Muslims صَدَقَةً no? um, تُطَحِّرُهُمْ So that you can purify them وَتُزَكِّهِمْ And you can cleanse them. No? So just by giving sadaqah, we actually purify our wealth, right? Then Allah says, وَسَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ And then pray for them. إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ السَّمْنَلِيمُ Your prayer is a relief for them, a sukoon, a tranquility. So do you see the prayer of, the prayer of Rasul on us is a sukoon for us. Now our scholars tell us, that no, whenever somebody says salam alaikum, that is mustar. But alaikum salam is wajib. Right? Although the one who says salam alaikum is mustar, he gets 69 rewards. The one who responds says get one reward. So this is a very unique thing that no, something which mustar has more salam than the wajib. But because the response of salam is wajib, when we say salam alaikum ya rasulullah, or for example, when we say that ya Allah, Allahumma salli ala humda al humad, oh Allah bless him and his family. When we are praying for him, he also would return his prayer for us. And the prayer of Rasul on us, Quran says, Inna salataka sakanun lahum, Allahu samin alim. No? In fact, your prayer is a relief to them. And Allah is hearing and knowing. So Allah is hearing when we say salat. Okay, and Allah also hears his salat on us and he's fully aware of it. So it's an interesting ayat, which I thought that I will connect with this discussion. Then also one hadith, which is long, but I will just uh, briefly discuss. This is an interesting hadith. In Tawaf al-Ukul, which I, I'm sure, I hope all of you have in your library, Tawaf al-Ukul. There's also another book, you know, what, Uyun uh, al Uyun al is two volumes, which has all the hadith of you know, eighth Imam. So there was a debate in the court of Mamun, between Imam Radha al-Islam and the ulama. Mamun had gathered all the ulama scholars and there was a debate. In this debate, Imam was trying to prove the superiority and fazilat of Ahadul Bayt in light of the Quran. He used Quranic verses. So here, Qala Abu hassan Abu hassan is the kunniya of the eighth Imam. Akhbiruni an kawadillah yasin al-Quran hakim He's asking, he says the ulama, you inform me about Allah's no words, Yasin al Quran Rakim. In the Kalamina Mursaleen, Allah Surat Mustakim. Faman Faman Anna Bikauli Yasin. He says that when Allah says Yasin wal Quran Rakim, in the Kalamina Mursaleen, Allah Surat Mustakim, he's asking the ulama who is meant by Yasin, right? So all of them said, Kadu ulama Yasin Muhammad, Laysa Fi Shakun. They said, of course, Yasin here refers to Muhammad. Without regarding that, there is no doubt about it. That in fact, this is the first one. Kala will listen. So now Imam continues in the debate. Imam can say, Imam says, No, Ati Allah Muhammadan wa al Muhammadan min zadi kafadan lam yablu ahadun kunhu wa sifi liman aklahu. No, Allah has given Mary's, you know, to the Prophet and his family. No, anybody who has intelligence would not be able to deny that, right? That nobody can attain that kind of thing. Then he says, Imam says, In the Allah, lam yusallim ala ahadin illa al anbiya'i. He says in Quran, when Allah sends salawat to the prophets, he just sends salawat to the prophets without mentioning their family. Then he's quoting the verses. Fakala tabaraka wa ta'ala. You know, the Allah says in the Quran, Salamu ala nui fil alameen. This is ayat of Quran. Wakala salamun ala Ibrahim, wakala salamun ala Musa, wa Haruna. 
ولم يقول سلام على آل نوح ولم يقول سلام على آل إبراهيم ولم قال سلام على آل موسى. So Imam is trying to say that in Quran, when Allah sends salam, He just sends salam to the prophets. For example, He says salam to Nuh in the Alamin. May Allah peace be peace be on Nuh, no, in in the universe, right? Wa kala salam ala Ibrahim, no peace be on Ibrahim, peace be on Musa and Harun, right? Wa lam yakul. Allah did not say salam ala Ali Nuh. Allah did not say peace be on the progeny of Nuh or the family of Nuh. Allah does not say in Quran that peace be on the family of Ibrahim. Nor does Allah say, no, no, nor did he say that peace be on no, family of Musa and Harun, right? But Allah said, Ali Yasin, Yani Ali Muhammad. Do you see? So this is in the court of Mamun. The ulama have gathered. And Imam has used 12 different places in the Quran to prove the superiority of Ahlul Bayt, subhanAllah. It is very interesting. Those, in fact, the book Uyun Akbar Rada is there also online, both the volumes, the Arabic and English. Read this thing, it will really help you. So, but we're just discussing that you can see at the end, Imam is not only saying that, oh Allah bless one of his family, but he says, one Muslim Allah had in Bado, right? And of course, the best of blessings you have sent anybody before him or after that. And then Imam ends by saying that dunya hasana or fil Oh Allah, give us good in this world and the hereafter. This is very important. That we this is the biggest difference. Islam has come to have a balanced life, right? We should always try to balance good of this world and the hereafter. Which we do that, but what the only problem is that sometimes we give more importance to this dunya. And when there is a conflict, we should always give preference to your akhirat because Quran says, no, well, akhirat khairun wa abka. Akhirat is better and enduring. Wakini, that means protect me or save me, bi rahmatika, with your mercy, Allah will nar, no, from the punishment of the fire. So that completes our discussion of this dua. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To accept our efforts, please do pray that we Allah accept effort. Again, let me tell you and admit that no, and confess that I have not given justice this dua. This dua is more profound and more detailed. What I could just do in this month of Ramadan, in spite of all the other commitments and work, right? I just present it with you. But at least we will have a taste that how profound this dua is and how beneficial it is. Inshallah, tomorrow. We will discuss, we will, we will just summarize you know, the, this dua. As far as uh, Ramadan is concerned, as you know that today is 27th of Ramadan. We have been fasting for the last 26 days. Today is 27th day. Some of us started even earlier, right? I just wanted to share with you some of the hadith. This will help us to just you know, assess ourselves. Let us assess ourselves that have we really achieved this thing what has been promised? If not, why don't we try in the remaining hours? Now we are talking of hours, not days, right? Beginning today, we'll just say what hours are remaining. So see what we can do. Whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan, Prophet says, right? In peace and silence and prevents his hearing, sight and body organs from lying, from haram and from backbiting, right? Seeking nearness to Allah, Allah will bring him to know him so close until he need, his knees touch the knees of Ibrahim, the friend of Allah. Now, subhanAllah, you can see here Prophet says his knees touch Ibrahim. Why Ibrahim? Because Ibrahim was the friend of Allah. It Allah Ibrahim Akhila Quran says, right? Now we cannot be near to Allah because Allah does, is not a body. When we say we are near to Allah, that is just near to his mercy. But here you can see Prophet brings this discussion that no, we'll be near to the friend of Allah. So this fasting is supposed to take us. As every time we say, Allah, this fasting really brings us near to Allah. Subhanahu. So let us see, just let us assess ourselves. Now that this Prophet says, Allah has specified that every action of the human being is multiplied. You know? A good deed by 10 times and up to 700 times, right? For example, every good deed you do, you get, you know, 10 times. In Ramadan, if you do any wajib thing, you get 70 times, right? If you give charity, you get 70 times, you know? But when it comes to fasting, 
no, except fasting, it is for me, prophets, Allah says, I will reward it. He, the believer, forgoes his food and drink and desires for my sake, Allah says. This is Hadith Akusi. So it is for me and I will reward it. You know? In other words, the reward is so special that Allah has not mentioned it. It is, Allah will look at our circumstances. For example, you know, just now, as we know, because of this uh, coronavirus pandemic, there are people who are frontline workers, right? Now they did write to Ayatollah Sistan is saying that no, because we are going through all this uh, tension and we have to see all these patients, can we stop fasting? And he said, no, you cannot do that. You have to still fast, provided you continue fasting. Sometime in the day, for example, if it reaches a state whereby you can no longer bear it, then you're allowed to open, but you'll fast, right? So they are facing these challenges. So Allah is going to reward us based on the challenges we are facing, how much difficult it was, how sincere we were, how much we, how, 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 how much we kept away from all the kind of haram things, but he will reward it, right? The last hadith, again, I want to share with you, this hadith will help us just to assess ourselves. Now. Oh, Ahmad, Allah is you know, talking to our, our, our prophet. When my servant keeps his stomach hungry and controls his tongue, I grant him wisdom. Do you see this thing? So this fasting will bring wisdom, hikmat. If he is a believer, it will be a light for him and a proof and a cure and mercy. So this wisdom will be in a form of light and a proof and also cure and mercy, right? Then he will come to know what he did not know and will see what he did not see before. The first thing I will show him is his own faults so that he is not occupied with the faults of others, subhanAllah. How often we are so much worried about other people's faults, but our own faults, right? Look at our own faults, right? And I will grant him levels of awareness such that the shaitan does not affect him. So these are some of the benefits of fasting. We have fasted for the last 36 days. This is our 27th fast. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in case still, if you have not been able to achieve, that may Allah give us the ability to achieve this thing. You may ask questions, but again, we request you to ask questions, you know, seeking clarification regarding what we have seen today or even before. Thank you, Sheikh. Yeah, and also just again a reminder, we're trying to maintain the integrity of the recording as there's a lot of um, playbacks and, and there's a lot of disturbances sometimes with a lot of people. So if you could put your question in the chat and we'll go through them one by one. Um, Sheikh, the first question we have is, um, to what extent does uh, 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 Ali Yassin refer to Muhammad? Um, because he, I think he missed part of the discussion and he also wanted to thank you for all your efforts uh, to date on, on these wonderful lectures. Yes, indeed, yeah. According to this hadith, as I said, it's found in no, Tawful Ukul, which is a very important book of hadith, and also uh, Yunaf Barada, it clearly mentions that here Ali Yasin, in fact, Imam, Imam Rada is talking in, in front of the ulama, which Mamun had brought, no? And he's saying that, no, when Allah says Yasin al Quran Hakim, is there any doubt? Everybody said, we have no doubt that, no, that Yasin refers to the Prophet. So he said, again, in the Quran, when another Yasin comes, it also refers to the Prophet. So Ali Yasin is the Al of the Prophet. Um, another question here is, um, Salaam Alaikum, thank you, Sheikh Hasni, for these wonderful sessions. I have a question in regards to uh, the verse 37, um, Ayat 130, that was on the previous slide. Many Qurans yes. translate this as, peace be upon Ilyas, and I checked Ali Kuli Karai's translation as well. Why is this? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's Salaam Alaikum, Yasin. Of course, yeah. Ilyasin or Ali Yasin, you see, because what happens is that keep in mind that these marks were not there in the original Quran, right? So over time, certain things that have been disagreement. For example, Maliki Yomiddin or Maliki Yomiddin, right? Both are correct. Both, no? Was it Maliki Yomiddin or Maliki Yomiddin? Like this, there are a number of things. So whether it is Ilyasin or Ali Yasin, but according to this hadith, it is Ali Yasin. Thank you. Um, other questions, feel free to just enter in the chat. I think we're waiting for one person to type a question in the 
give them another 10 seconds. Uh, dear Sheikh, um, this dua is intended to help with um, makar makaklak nobility, correct? No, in fact, as we saw, yeah, that this dua has many benefits, not only just noble characters, because if you see earlier when the dua is uh, mentioned, uh, I wish I had put the book here, but it's only, uh, not only that it says for makar maklak and also what will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it was dua of Imam, when you want it, also please the last man. So when we summarize tomorrow, you will find that there are a number of aspects there. Besides akhlaq, there are also economic aspects. It also talks about, for example, how to deal with the external enemy. It also talks about how to deal with, you know, satanic thoughts. So a number of things have been covered this thing. It's a, it's a dua which is quite uh, comprehensive. And inshallah, tomorrow we will just highlight some of those things when we summarize. And uh, Sheikh, one one question is why why is it that we only recite this dua on the twenty third night only? Yeah, in fact, uh, you just asked the question. Jump the uh, tomorrow. I'm going to say this thing that it is unfortunate that we are only reciting into once a year. No, nowhere it says that you should you should only recite twenty third. It's actually we should recite this you no know, regularly, but on twenty third it's become part of our so recite it. But one of the things which I wanted to say tomorrow, but since now this has come today, that the dua is so comprehensive, so profound, so beneficial. Let us not only recite it once a year. Let us pray. Let us you know, give a pledge you know, to Imam that let us try to recite this dua often, especially those of us who, and nobody today, I don't think anybody can claim that I have qualified and graduated in the in, in the school of akhlaq. Those of us who are struggling to improve the akhlaq, they must recite. Those who have got children whose akhlaq are not good, those who have got grandchildren or nephews and nieces, this dua is a must. You know, once a month I will feel it's, it's a must thing. But we'll discuss more about it tomorrow. But yes, you know, it's not only 23rd. 23rd is just having put as part of the amal, but we need to do it often. Fun, thank you. Um, in Dua Abu Hamza Mali, it mentions how once one becomes good, they go and sit in the company of the good. When Allah brings them something to him and he goes back to bad deeds. What does this mean? I think this is probably a little bit off topic. Yeah, it's another Dua. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a of course, dua. when we look at that passage and discuss yeah. now, it's, a, it's, it's a one of the beautiful Duas. Since we mentioned, make sure that you do recite this Dua at least. Have it. But I have to be a passage and before we reflect now. But the good thing is that that, that dua, Abu Hamza Ismaili and Osma Kamakha, both of those have been taught by the fourth Imam. And I think when listeners just rem, um, looking for a reminder of when we are going to have the discussion on Salat al Layl, is it um, this week or will it be after my Ramzan? About what? About Salat al Layl, where are we planning a discussion? or? Yes, I thought that I'll bring it, but I'll see if tomorrow I can uh, bring it, yes. Okay. Uh, I'll try if I can include tomorrow, but tomorrow we also are presented by a doctor, but I'll see if I can briefly at least mention about it. Otherwise, on the, on the last day, no? Thank you. Um, there, there is um, one question here. Salam alaikum. Wish to learn how one can feel one's prayers, and supplications, and efforts have been heard and accepted, um, yeah. or at least gained some status. Yes, before indeed. Allah. indeed. Uh, very good question. Though. There's a hadith on that. But how can a person know that my dua is accepted, my namaz accepted? You won't receive a text message, right, from Allah. You won't get an SMS, no? So, of course, there's a beautiful, uh, what uh, Hadith he says, that if between two namaz, between you no know, two namaz, three namaz, four namaz, if you find that you, know, you are staying away from sins, this itself shows that you the namaz is accepted. Because Allah says, inna salata tanha anil fahashai wal munkar. Salat is the one which prevents you from fasha, that means indecency and munkar, something which is forbidden, right? So as you find, as you say your prayers and you are, it keeps you away from indecency, as you know, now we are entering into summer, right? Last yesterday we had a good day and I had to go out for some work, you know, and I said, well, I started because now the first day, just the sun is there and people just started dressing, you know, uh, what uh, indecently. So, 
if you find that the prayer you know, keeps you away from indecency and also from haram thing, it's indication that your namaz is accepted. Alhamdulillah, very good. Any other questions before we go to the poll? Feel free, please. Uh, I think it's a follow-up question to this last question only. It's, um, you know, um, will Allah not judge that our prayers were only for our own satisfaction and salvation rather than praying uh, in his salvation? And more than acceptance, I'm concerned whether Allah will weigh our prayers for niyat, for our needs and satisfaction versus solely for his praise. Yes, of course, it's very important that we should pray for the sake of Allah. But at the same time, if... If that should be the main aim. But if the secondary aim is that also this will help me to improve myself, as Quran promised, or for example, it will give me salvation, there's nothing wrong in it. No, even that, you know, of course, main prayer, prayer should be because it is our duty to worship Allah. Allah as a Lord deserves to be worshipped and we are abd, we are the servants of Allah. So that should be the main goal, which is very correct. But also, for example, back of the mind that now this namaz should bring success to me because Allah says, right? Allah himself says in the Quran that those who say prayers are successful. So Quran itself says, for example, that prayer brings success. Quran says that prayers keeps you away from uh, what bad things. So if even those niyats are there, it should be fine. No? But maybe you can say there's a second niyat. Let us keep the, uh, I always say, for example, uh, uh, since this question has come, People sometimes talk so many benefits about fasting, right? The physical, the medical benefits, which we don't dispute. I remember I had to go to my doctor during this month for some uh, specialist had to go. And then uh, he is, uh, uh, when I told him that I'm fasting, he said, it's a very good thing. He's not a Muslim. He's a, he says, I myself miss my meal once a week. You know? It's a very good practice. And then he gave so many benefits. But in spite of all the benefits of fasting, which we don't dispute, on the day of Eid, it is haram, right? So the question comes, where does the benefit go? If fasting had a medical benefit, why it is haram on the day of Eid? So keep in mind that the main reason we Muslims fast is because of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else is secondary. In the same way we say prayers, the main reason is because Allah is the Lord, he deserves to be worshiped and it's my duty to worship him. Everything else is now secondary. Um, and there's a couple of uh, questions, just a reminder about um, when we'll be discussing uh, Surah 63, Ayat 9. Um, will that be um, this week or um, beyond? Um... No, if somebody had asked, I just checked it here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something beyond this thing. I checked it that I did not find to see any special reasons that why that was given, but just generally it's an it's a ongoing theme in the Quran that uh, make sure that the, what uh, your wealth and children should not divert you from the zikr of Allah. So it's not only that ayat, but if you see there are a number of references. So it's an ongoing thing. Uh, believers have been told that they should be careful, unlike the hypocrites, no? Because Quran talks about hypocrites first, first eight verses, and then stop. Allah talks about believers in the, in, the, in the surah. So when Allah turns to believers, Allah is trying to tell that make sure that you don't do like hypocrites, that no, your wealth and your uh, property should not divert you from the members of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One question here is about um, in these last remaining days of my Ramzan, can you recommend um, any kind of um, amal ibadah to focus on? Yes, of course. Tomorrow, will be, uh, today is, you know, tomorrow, inshallah, this evening will be Shabbat Juma. So the last evening, first of all, just make a point that you rest in the afternoon and keep awake. This is the last Thursday evening. And then, of course, uh, we can recite uh, uh, Namaz al Shab, we can recite uh, Quran, we can recite Dua Josh and Kabir if there is time, the way you do on, 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 on a Shab Qadr, right? You can also recite Namaz Jafar Tayya, which is highly recommended. You know, we can do that. And you'll find that night will pass by. But most important is just sit. This is the time. Just sit and re reflect on the self. You know? Where have you gone wrong? And just try to promise Allah that, you know, give me the strength that I do not repeat this thing. You now, because this is the, Ramadan is the best time of reforming. So I want to reform, Ya Allah, I will, I will obey you. Now give me the ability, give me the strength that I really 
a different person as Ramadan ends. Sheikh, we have one last question, I think, before we go to the poll, and that is a follow-up, I think, on uh, 63.9. Um, do you have like a contemporary example of distraction and of monafic um, for today's times? Oh, no, of course, as Quran says itself, the wealth and children are distraction, right? For example, if you have a child, a girl who is nine years old, and because you are a mother or a father says, no, let her continue sleeping, you know? She can see her namaz when she wakes up, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, no? So that is, the law of child is so much that we think that for a moment that, no, her comfort, especially last night, she slept late, she was fasting, she had, you know, what uh, late uh, after iftar, she had snacks, or maybe sometimes she was taking her water, uh, studying, doing her studies. So we tend to, you know, as the ayah says, that let not your children and property divert you. So it happens often, right? That we get diverted from this thing. So there are so many examples in life, you no? Know? And this is an ongoing theme in the Quran. It's not only in Surah Munafiq one. Yeah, as I was checking before today, I was surprised that SubhanAllah, there are so many different you know, verses of Quran with the same thing that you know, make sure that your children, al mal al banun zinat al hayat dunya, no? As Allah says in Surah Al Kahf, no? al mal banun zinat the uh, what wealth and children are just an adornment, right? Of uh, what uh, of this world. No? Thank you, Sheikh. Um, okay, I think we'll open the poll. This is a, a, a few questions about. Uh, where we want to go from the end of my Ramzan in terms of future sessions. Um, and I'm going to launch the poll. Uh, before I do that, I've also put in the chat um, an email. If you had a question that you weren't able to get across or ask, um, or you want to make a suggestion for future sessions, uh, please grab that email on the chat and and, and feel more than free to, to do um, an, a send an email. With that, I'm going to open the poll and uh, let's see. There are two questions in it, um, so I'll start that in a second. Uh, it's having some problem here. One second, I'll see if I can. Okay, um, my apologies. I don't know why it's not um, launching. It's giving me some error. I will investigate and inshallah, we'll try and do it tomorrow. Um, but it, went, it was working for me yesterday. <laughs> well, uh, this this so, is the technology. Technology yeah. is like this. It gets, lets you down the last moment. No? Yeah, it, it is uh, surprising because I had I had tried this yesterday. But um, I will, I'll try and get it working for tomorrow and we'll have two opportunities to, to do the poll today, tomorrow and the day after. Um, and um, if, if for whatever reason there's still a problem, we'll get the we'll send out the questions and, and you can reply back to myself in an email. But I'll try and get it working tomorrow, inshallah. Um, with that, I'm going to thank the Sheikh and all of you for your good questions um, and your patience. Um, thank you, Sheikh. Thank you, everybody.